Jack, you used the word perseverance yes. to, to describe the last one. How would you just describe this one overall? Yeah, just overall, you know, we talk about the, the mental and the physical approach to today's game. Last game of the trip, before you head back on home, can you mentally lock in? And, and our group did. We got punched early. I think we responded to uh, different segments of the game, uh, showed a lot of resolve, and just stayed together. And uh, we got rewarded for it, Megan. What was the difference, especially in those last two quarters, the third and the fourth, but in those last couple of minutes in that fourth quarter where you guys were able to rally down from 10? Yeah, I think overall, I think two things really stood out. Uh, we were able to turn them over in the second half, which we weren't able to do in the first half. So that showed uh, our ability to really get into the basketball, create some havoc without fouling. Um, and then the other piece of, of just staying together. Um, it was too many times where uh, you know we got down four late in the game we still persevere we were down 12 at at half uh, we kept, continue to, to push forward so yeah, a lot of a lot of big plays by a lot of guys out there Jack, to your point in your experience when you have a win like this down 17 against the champs and play the way you did down the stretch how much of a carryover is that then moving forward knowing that this group can do what it did yeah Nick it it, it means a lot because you know, you get in a position where um, I think we're starting to figure some things out. And so that's evidence to our guys, what it looks like down the stretch, what our defense looks like. Uh, I think our guys were pretty, you know, it's a tough team to play against. No style is like there. So your approach to the game has to be spot on. Uh, I think we settled in and, and um, did some really good things in the second half. So we've had some quarters that we've been able to string together and we want to stack some more quarters together. Uh, but it means a lot to finish the trip uh, especially when you're down at halftime, not give in uh, and be mentally tough enough to get it done. Yeah, I think uh, guys are starting to uh, figure it out together. Uh, I think the defensive end, I'll take that approach first, is we really cover for each other. Nick's been great at the rim. We've really gotten into the basketball. Um, schematically, we've been in a good place, whether that was uh, the amount of threes that they shot tonight kept them under their average. So that was uh, where we wanted to do. Um, and then, you know, what groups we finish with, we've learned how to, like I talked about before, finish with Nick, with Ben, with Nick and Ben, uh, without one of those guys, ball in Kai's hands, ball in Seth's hands. So uh, guys are gaining confidence in each other of what we want to do, especially at the end of games. And the Warriors' game plan was to put Nick Claxton at the free throw line. How would you just describe how he was able to kind of navigate through that? And can you... Um, discuss your decision of kind of keeping him in, in into the game. Just a, a few more extra more seconds and minutes there. Yeah, that's mental. That's that mental part of it, Megan. That mental and physical. And uh, this is great. Uh, this is great for Nick because uh, he's going to be counted on when the playoffs come around. And uh, if a team wants to use that strategy, uh, he'll continue to gain confidence in getting to the line and, and shooting. And so um, we kept him out there. Uh, he'll continue to be out there if a team wants to take that strategy. You guys didn't force a ton of turnovers tonight. You really haven't forced a lot yeah. all year. What were you able to do, though, late to get some timely ones? Usually you guys are more likely to come up with a block than you are steals. What would you do there technically? Yeah, we really uh, got into the basketball, Brian. So, you know, all their stuff was predicated on uh, their – the freedom of movement and being able to pass the basketball. So we really climbed into whoever was going to be delivering passes. We got deflections that way, which those extra half a count of a second of a guy coming off a screen, if you can buy yourself a half a second, it matters. And so uh, then that pass has a little bit uh, less timing. Uh, so overall, our pressure on the basketball, if there was one thing in the second half was uh, huge. So, Jock, uh, how can you explain uh, Kyrie's play? I mean, really amazing tonight and um, really carried your team. He's been uh, really good at picking his spots, uh, of understanding when we need him to take over the game, of understanding how to be a decoy at some, uh, sometimes, how to be a screener. Uh, so different levels of the game that he's uh, able to produce for us. And uh, big buckets at the end of the game, whether it was getting fouled, rebounds, just big plays. Uh, I think he loves that moment, and uh, he's continued to show so. Coach, what made you decide to finish the game the way that you did? 
Yeah, Rick, good to see you, partner. I think uh, overall, uh, we've had some success when we've been able to space the floor, put the ball in Kai and Seth's hand, um, have the shooting around him. I mean, Joe hits a, a, a huge corner three ball because we're uh, Utah Watanabe's in the game and spaces the floor and can screen and can run the floor. So capitalizing on our, on our roster. And um, if the team presents itself, we can have space and uh, attack downhill, we will. And with Kyrie, um, it would appear that that Steph Curry, Kyrie, battle that we've seen for the years that brings something added to what that Kyrie rises to that particular challenge. Uh, it, are you seeing the same thing? It's just how can you not be a fan of, of basketball? This is, this is a great game, uh, unbelievable athletes, two of the premier athletes at their position um, trying to get their team to win. And so uh, I think it brings out the best uh, in, in all really competitive athletes. Uh, that's one of the, the I don't know, special things about this game, and I talk about it all the time, is being able to look across the guy that you're competing against and try to win against him. Jack, I think tomorrow marks the, the two-week update on Kevin. From the updates you've gotten and been given in the last few days, how is he coming along as he goes through his rehab? Yeah, Nick, uh, I really kind of said in two weeks, uh, let me know something. So you and I will know something at the same time tomorrow, uh, which is the two-week mark. So uh, besides that, I uh, haven't asked for an update, and I'm looking forward to the two-week update. Uh, for Royce O'Neal at this point, how many game-winning shots like that do you think he'll have by the end of the regular season? And what can you just say to a guy who can always step in and, and knock a shot, a big time shot like down? You know, Megan, everyone keeps asking, you know, what does Royce bring to the table? Um, uh, and I think another example of a guy that you trust at the end of a game who will take the right shot, who will make the right decision at the end of the game, who doesn't mind playing on both ends of the floor. Uh, I think he has the trust of his coaching staff, his teammates, and He's in the right spot, and uh, great pass and uh, by Kai to, to reward Royce and, and to make the shot. Best clutch win percentage in the league, and one month away from the All-Star weekend right now. So what's your vision for the team, especially when Katie's missing from the games? Well, let me knock on some wood with that clutch percentage. We like to keep that going. I think overall, just our group continue to, to grow together uh, and figure out things a little bit on the fly, uh, and also at the same time, uh, take advantage of what we do well. And uh, it's not going to go away from being simple uh, on the defensive end of the floor, playing hard, being accountable. Um, I think you saw that tonight. That's carried us uh, without Kevin. That'll continue to carry us. And then guys are getting reps uh, and understanding what's expected of them. That's huge for our, our team, your expectations on a nightly basis. So no one's confused. Uh, so we're getting there. Because I think like clutch win percentage really shows something. Like all the best teams have a really high like clutch win percentage. So. What's the key to the success of winning the game, knocking it down? Yeah, the coach doesn't try to mess it up and get in the way. Let the players do what they do. I have special players, let them play with their instincts. Coach don't screw it up and uh, live with the results. Love it. <laughs> Thanks, guys.